friends. So glad you could be here. It's kind of a gray and uh, rainy day here, so there's not as much light in here as there might be, but that's okay. I'm gonna play my flutes for you. This one is made from African Paduke. It's kind of a reddish wood, and after it's been in the sun a while, it turns brown just like we do. It's made by some uh, brothers in Texas. They're not making them anymore, so this one gets to ride around and it's on case. I have to be careful with it. Hope you're all doing okay. I don't mind staying home, so this has been all right for me. Uh, I spent a lot of time in my bathrobe. And, you know, it's just fine. I hope you've found um, ways to entertain yourself and just um, read a lot of books or whatever you like to do. This is a sweet flute by my dear friend, Doug Thunderhorse, made out of maple. It's got a beautiful walnut bird. I think you'll like the sound. Thank you, Douglas. It's a lovely flute. Let me talk about my background here. This is a painting my mother did. I'm very um, honored to have it. It was one that was just like it that hung in my room at home when I was a child. And I came home one day and it had been sold. And uh, she didn't know how much I loved it. And I told her. I was going to miss it terribly, so she painted this one. It's very much the same. 
She must have loved me. Mm. So this is where I got my name, Sunflower, my stage name, came from this painting. Okay, the next flute is by Brad Young. He now lives in Florida. He's a retired person. And his flute is made of sassafras wood and uh, pink pearl. And I forget what the other, the darker wood for the flute is. Uh, it's probably cherry. I don't remember right now, but sassafras wood by Brad Young. Yeah, uh, part of what I do is play this animal right here, uh, French horn. That side of my life, uh, haven't played a concert since uh, February 1st. So that's a lot of uh, canceled concerts. I'm looking forward. I miss all the people. I miss pe seeing my friends who we play together in the big orchestras. So hopefully this will all settle and we'll get back to that um, at a safe time, at a safe time.
This is a lovely flute, it has a lot of meaning to me. It's made from a plum tree that I used to know. It was growing in front of uh, Bob Vibrook's house, Bob and Susie. Um, it had to be cut down and uh, Joseph Whitefeather and Sage does the artwork on him, his wife. Joseph Whitefeather made this beautiful flute out of a plum tree. Um, this flute was made for Bob Vibrooks, uh, his camp name, of, or uh, I don't know, camp name, was Sek. I think that meant uh, fire master. He certainly was. He's the one that got me involved in uh, the living history events. I made a big beaded belt for him, and to pay for it, he set his teepee up in the backyard here at the house um, for Thanksgiving time. He didn't come back to get it until May, so the family was hooked. We'd go in the in the teepee and build a fire in the winter and, you know, shake the snow off the door and go in, so on. So shortly after he came to get his uh, teepee, we had to go out to Friendship, Indiana and get one for ourselves. So the whole family started going to living history events, and I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the influence that my friend Sek Bob Fibrooks had. He's since passed on. That was for you, baby. This is probably my fanciest flute. Let's see if it's in focus for you there. Um, played by Billy Krotvik. He's one of the fellows that I see once a year at the uh, flute festival. 
And uh, please come. It's the, like the third week in August, third weekend in August. Uh, Lord willing, we'll get to have it this year. Hopefully we're through with this virus by then. I don't really expect to be, but um, let's be hopeful that we can at least get together if we're careful. And um, it's Billy and, and uh, Doug Thunderhorse and all, all kinds of, all the flute pay makers that I know from the area come and uh, show their beautiful wares. It's dangerous for me because I, I have to buy flute. So. Anyway, Billy Probeek.
Billy Crowbeak's flute. It's made out of a poplar branch and we left some of the bark on up here. It's a, it's a lovely thing. I hope you like the sound. Okay, this flute's fun because it starts there and it keeps going and it keeps going. <laughs> it's a big flute. It's a big bass A flute by a good friend here in Cincinnati, uh, Charles Perdue. Um, speaking of Cincinnati, that's where I am. And if you would put in your comments where you are, I'd really enjoy seeing that. And I'm not ignoring you. I'm just uh, not able to read all the comments with my bifocals, you know, I'll be doing this the whole time. So I will read everything a little later if that's okay with you. I'm really glad you're here. So listen to this bass A flute by Charles Perdue. <laughs>
a lot of air. It uh, sends me good places. Um, let's see, I, I will play this flute again in a little bit. Um, I like to do some, I've got some electronic toys here and I like to play this flute using those. This is the cutest bird of all my flutes. I'll put it with that white background so you can see the little beak. Isn't he cute? It's a little wren, I believe, with that tail sticking up. This was made by a fellow named William Bradford. I met him. He, this was at the Fort Ancient uh, gift shop. And um, I got to meet him later. I asked about the maker and uh, he was living in a nursing home at the time. He's passed on since then, but um, I played a concert at his nursing home and he rolled up in his wheelchair and we played a duet, um, him playing another one of his beautiful flutes that he had made. It, it's, uh, this one can make me fairly humble. It's one of those that um, will damp out all you flute players out there going, oh God, no, but you know, Sometimes you don't get to decide when the song is over, that's all. All you history buffs will recognize that name. Um, a. William Bradford was one of the founders of the Plymouth Colony. No friend to the natives by any means. So I hope to bridge some gaps by playing a native flute made by William Bradford. Hmm? Good friend, 
John Suttles, he calls himself the Ozark Guru. Um, he said out loud, correct me if I'm wrong, John, he said out loud in front of a bunch of flute players that uh, he could make a flute out of anything you can put a knife to. So we've been trying to test him. He hasn't, uh, we haven't stumped him yet. This one is a sunflower stalk. I'm delighted, of course, with my name being Sunflower, to have a flute made out of a sunflower stalk. It's got a nice, sweet, little airy sound. They're all very different, aren't they? Have you noticed? They're all very different little animals. Sunflower Salt Flute by John Suttles. He also made this larger one. You see them side by side here. Um, this one needs a little time with the doctor. The, the uh, bird, the block has warped a little bit so it doesn't seal properly. He'll be able to fix it, no problem. I've got to send it to him. But I just wanted to show it to you. Isn't that amazing? Sunflower stock flutes. While I'm talking about John Suttles, here's another example of his amazing creativity and bravery. This is a, uh, le a leg bone from a deer, a small deer, if you can tell that. Um, I joke that the dogs like this one, not, not because they can chew on it. I don't allow that, but it's up in their hearing range. It's a very high little flute, obviously. It's so tiny. Just room for my fingers.
A lot of fun. Isn't it pretty? And it's so smooth. It's like a old ivory keys on a on a piano. An old piano with the ivory keys. Just as smooth and sweet. Thank you, John. Okay, this is the second flute by uh, Joseph Whitefeather and his wife, Sage. I uh, used this on my latest recording, which is um, Water Color Sunflowers. You'll uh, be able to tell where I got my cover, right there behind me. Um, I mislabeled it as cedar, and he told me later that it's from ash. So I play this flute in memory of all the big, beautiful ash trees that we've lost lately. I live, we live across the street from Spring Grove Cemetery in Cincinnati. It was just tragic seeing those big beauties come down. Taken down by the boar, the beetle, the beetle. Anyway, this is a lovely little ash flute by Joseph Whitefeather. difference. It's a quite a powerful flute. Each one has its unique personality for sure. Okay, I mentioned that I have some electronic toys and I, I will uh, play with that a bit if you will allow me. Excuse me. put myself in the Grand Canyon.
that's fun. <laughs> okay, I'm going to drop a couple of names. Um, Johnny Litford was very helpful. Um, he uh, did this wonderful live broadcast called the TP concert, TP program, whatever he called it. TP, get it, with all the toilet paper stuff. But it was totally peaceful. So I loved it and uh, enjoyed watching him. And um, let's see, Clint Goss, of course, he's got a lot of educational videos out there. And I learned from him that you can tune the two barrels of a uh, drone flute. Um, I'm still working on this, and this is a new project for me. So um, this is by Charles Perdue again. It's a lovely double barreled flute, regular flute on one side, and then the other side is just uh, a simple, you can play two notes by changing the speed of the air. Okay, and it has, sorry about the thunder, it's got two. Um, mouthpieces so you can choose to add the drone or not some of them just have one and the drone sounds all the time and I find that rather dull so um, I've adjusted the block according to Clint Goss so that it's a little lower on one side than the other and it makes it closer in tune it's not perfect yet but as I said it's a work in progress I'm working on it fun to play. Rattle, rattle, rattle. Hear all the flutes clacking together. I'm just in a big pile. I'm just in a big pile over here on the chair. Okay, now I'm going to play with another of my electronic toys. Oh, I meant to explain. When I'm playing this big bass flute, it looks like I'm doing something fancy, like the silver flute players. They have to hold their embouchure just right and blow across the hole. No, no, this is simple, just like the others. I'm blowing straight in the hole. Charles was kind to not put it in the end because it would be a tremendous reach, okay? So that's why I'm holding in a different way than all the other flutes. Okay, let's see how this goes. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Okay. Yeah, that was a looper. It uh, records 14 seconds of uh, what you play and then plays it back and over and you can record several layers. So I played two layers of uh, bass flute and then added uh, Doug Thunderhorse's A maple flute on top. I hope you enjoyed it. The uh, bass flute tends to overpower my little sound system here, so I'll have to check to see how it sounded. Glass bottle, folks, it's not that hard. This is the PSA section of my little concert today. Um, I'm going to keep wearing a mask outside. The virus is not gone, um, in spite of what uh, some misguided people are trying to say. Um, I made a simple, simple mask. It's just a folded bandana. No sewing with a couple of hair ties. Or you can use rubber bands. And it just goes on over your ears. Ta-da! Like that, like that, it's perfect. Anyway, just, just do it, stay safe, stay safe folks. I don't wanna lose any of you. All right, I'm gonna play one more flute song. I think I'll use that plum flute again, and then I'll say goodbye. I've had a great time doing this today. Um, and I look forward to reading all your comments. Yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot for being here. I love you all. And I look forward to seeing you in person and getting all the hugs, all that good stuff when we can safely. Take care. Bye bye.